Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Family Worship Center. Happy Easter to everybody today. Somebody shout praise the Lord. If you're glad Jesus is alive, why don't you put your hands together and give him some praise in this house today. Amen. It is so good to see you. We welcome you here today to all of our live stream family, our online family. We're so glad to have you with us today as well. I know people have been texting all week saying, when is it going to go live? Well, I'm glad that we're here live with you today and glad that you're able to watch this. It's been a fantastic weekend, busy week, all week, rehearsals since, sun, since Monday, every single night. And um, it's been, it's, but it's been a phenomenal week. We have had uh, over 1,500 people uh, that have come through here in the last th uh, two days uh, and this morning. So we thank God for that. We've had 30-something um, people that we know for a fact have given their life to Jesus. Uh, praise God for that. And there's been about 60 people that we're sure of, but there's probably been more, that said, I rededicated my life to God, and I'm ready to do something great for the Lord. So can we just thank God for His goodness today? It's been wonderful, and these folks have done a phenomenal job. They have worked really, really hard uh, and really, really long to put all of this together, and uh, they are very, very excited to be able to, to sing it and to present it. Uh, and give it to you today. Hey, let me just tell you this real quick in case you need it. Uh, we do have child care available for uh, kids age three and under. So if you'd like to take kids there, you can go out this door, turn left, and there's a registration desk down there. We also have a mother's room down there uh, for your convenience if you need that as well. Um, you know, it's been five years since we've done a production like this, not because we haven't wanted to, but it's just, you know, 2020 changed everything. And uh, we did it in 2019, uh, and then 2020 came, and so it's just been trying to regroup, get it all together. But I'm here to tell you that you're, gonna, you're in for a treat. This, this one tops anything we've ever done. Uh, I've seen it, again, this is my fifth time seeing it this morning, and I'm just telling you, it is amazing to me. The message uh, that they present and the way that they present it is very simple. It's very understandable. Some, some people have even put on their uh, evaluation card, uh, you know, it was so understandable. It, is, it has been amazing, and uh, we're real excited about presenting it to you today. Our prayer, we've been praying for you. We've been praying. We've prayed over every one of these chairs before anybody has ever sat in them from every single presentation that we've done. And ask that God would just touch the people that sit in these chairs, that whatever need they might have in their life, that he would reveal himself to them, touch them, supply their need. And uh, so we, we believe in God to do something great today. And our prayer is that God would give us a new and fresh revelation of Easter. You know, I was on my way to town early this morning, and I said, Lord, I just want to thank you so much that Jesus is alive. And you know what came to me no sooner than I said it? It was like the Lord said, I was alive yesterday. And I thought, you know what? He sure was. I'll be alive tomorrow. What I'm saying is that we need a new revelation of Easter that it's not something that we just celebrate once a year. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ every morning we wake up. We ought to say, thank you, Jesus, that the tomb is empty and that you are alive. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I want, um, I've got two or three things I want to tell you, first of all, okay, just housekeeping things. Number one, we will not have service Wednesday night. Just tell somebody, just so you can say it, tell them we're not having service here Wednesday night. I understand it's spring break. There are a lot of people that are going to be gone. Plus, we have totally, all these folks that are presenting this are totally wore out. And so we're going to tell them, look, stay home, spend some time with your family, enjoy a night off. So we will not be having service live here on Wednesday night. But I can tell you right now, if you don't have a church home, you do not want to miss next Sunday morning. I mean, you know, following up after Easter, it's going to be awesome. So you don't want to miss uh, next Sunday morning. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that. Second thing is, don't forget to silence your cell phone. Nothing worse than in the middle of a powerful performance of something or something that you're watching uh, and you really are into it uh, for, you know, your wife's cell phone to go off. Y'all know how it is. 
I just thought I'd throw that out. So anyway, uh, make sure that you silence your phone. Thirdly, we really need for you to remain in your seat. And the reason is because there are people that are coming in at different times from every door in this building, coming down all these different aisles. And the thing is, is that you don't know when they're actually going to be coming in. And so I do not want anybody to get poked by a spear from a Roman soldier. Y'all all right? Okay, I don't want anybody to get run over by a disciple that's running in because they're excited about Jesus. So um, it, it's just, but, but we do want you to interact with them. What we mean by that is that we want you to clap your hands. We want you to shout amen. We want you to lift your hands and worship. I mean, this is a church service, and that's what we're here to do is to have church and to worship God. And I'm going to tell you, some of these songs and some of these scenes that you're going to see, they're going to reach down, and they're going to get you really hard right here. So I want you to respond. I want you to worship. I want you to give God praise for what he's going to do. Amen? Amen. All right, let's try it out. Put your hands together. Shout amen. 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 All right, I want everybody to stand with me. We're going to open with prayer, and we're going to get started today. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this great opportunity we have to be here and to worship in this place today. God, we are so thankful for all that you have done this week as we have shared the gospel, the fact that Jesus is alive, that he has risen. We are so thankful for all that you have done through it, through this production. Today, Lord, I ask you to touch this choir, Lord, this, this cast, the crew, every person that has a part, and I ask you to anoint them one more time, to give them the strength and the energy to deliver this message one more time. And God, I thank you for the lives that it's going to touch in this building and those that are watching online as well. So God, have your way. And God, we will give you all the thanks and all the praise for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Now hold on, before you're seated, I want you to turn around and shake about 14 people's hands, hug on their neck, and tell them, I'm so glad I got to see you today. And then you may be seated. Amen, amen, and amen. So I want you to enjoy this today. We want to present to you this morning the Easter song from the Family Worship Center Sanctuary Choir, the cast, and the crew under the direction of our director, Joshua Michael Moore. Could you give them a big, big hand today?
is alive. He is risen. Can you believe it? I couldn't believe it at first. None of us could believe it at first, especially after all we'd been through. Maybe you don't know the whole story, but I know you can't say hallelujah with your whole heart unless you know the whole story. For it is only when we've stumbled through the darkness that we can truly celebrate the light. Jesus is the light. I'd seen him give light to everyone he touched. Blind eyes could see Paralyzed feet could dance. Bitter souls tasted the sweetness of forgiveness. Born again with new life. For example, we spent an evening with Lazarus. He'd been dead, wrapped in grave clothes and in a tomb for four days. I was there when Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. And out came the man, alive. Now that was hard to believe. But I saw it with my own eyes. And I had no choice but to believe it as we shared a meal together with him. Not long after that, I knew where we would be heading, Jerusalem, and I couldn't help but be excited about it. Jesus was the Son of God. Of that, me and my fellow disciples were absolutely convinced. I mean, after all the things that we experienced as we followed him for three years, how could we not believe he was who he said he was? Now, after the evening with Lazarus and his sisters, we turned our attention towards our journey to Jerusalem. We were all looking forward to this day, the day when we would enter the holy city of our forefather, David, the day when we would enjoy the feast together, the day when we could finally get some rest, the day when, perhaps, the people would finally crown Jesus as king.
After a reception like that into Jerusalem, you would have thought a crown was waiting for Jesus in the praetorium. But perhaps we were a little too eager. Not long after such a grand reception, on the day of unleavened bread, we all met in an upper room to share the Passover meal together. Jesus warned us then that he would suffer. He broke bread and gave it to us, saying, This is my body, which I give for your forgiveness. Then he passed around the cup, the cup of the new covenant in his blood. While we were eating and drinking, Jesus said, the hand of him who is to betray me is with me on the table. An eerie feeling rushed through all of us. We wanted to know who he was talking about. Who would betray our Lord? We all sat there looking at each other, trying to catch a glimpse of deceit. But while we sat there wondering, Jesus tied a towel around his waist and began to wash our feet. Who could it be? Watching Jesus wash our feet after revealing that one of us was going to betray him, it was almost too much. Even Peter spoke up and said he could never allow Jesus to wash his feet. But Jesus said to him, if I don't wash you, you have no part of me. Suddenly Judas jumped up from the table and left in a hurry. At first we were all confused, but it quickly became clear. It was Judas. I couldn't believe it. How could he betray the man that had just washed his feet? But he had made his choice, and he was gone. Now there was talk of us going to the garden after dinner. Jesus' face looked so troubled, like a deep sadness had fallen upon his soul. We could only hope that praying in the garden would be able to bring him some comfort that night. Kneeling in the dark, 
I can almost hear him pray. See his tears, or are there drops of blood? Does it have to end this way? See him there, huddled on the ground As the night is growing colder See him cry, carrying the weight of the world upon his shoulders like a lamb led to the slaughter, must you go to Calvary, Lamb of God, why should you suffer? We had fallen asleep. We couldn't even stay awake to pray with Jesus. Not long after he woke us up, we saw torches. And there was Judas, accompanied by soldiers and priests. Betrayed by one of us. Obviously, he had never been one of us. We wondered if we should prepare to fight. But they were outnumbered. And they had weapons. Yeah, Peter had a sword, but what difference was one sword going to make? No, they were there to take Jesus. He taught in the temple every day. Why did they come with weapons? And at night, they were there to arrest him. But as they approached him, they all fell to the ground, unable to even stand before him. Though they were set on his death, he never even fought back. We wondered if they were gonna come after us next. But instead, they took him to the high priest. These men testify against you. You said you would destroy the temple and build it back in three days. What is your defense? Do you not have an answer? I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Oh, really? We'll see you seated at the right hand of power, coming in on a cloud from heaven? This man utters blasphemy. What other witnesses do we need? Prophesy to us, Christ. Who just hit you? Who spit on you? Prophesy to us, Messiah. What is your judgment? Death. Take him to Pilate. These men say that you have been misleading them by forbidding them to pay tribute to Caesar. They say you claim to be Christ, a king. Are you the king of the Jews? I find no guilt in this man. He incites dissension. He stirs up the people. I repeat, I find no guilt in this man. If he's a Galilean, then take him to Herod. So, 
your Jesus. Do you know how long I've wanted to meet you? And now, here you are. I have heard about your signs and wonders. Is there a miracle you can do for me right here, you know, without any rehearsal? <laughs> so, I hear you're a king. Is that right? Are you a king? Strip him! Give him one of my robes, the purple robe with the gilded tassels. He speaks blasphemy! He is worthy of death. Death? For pretending to be a king? I see no reason to sentence him to death, but I will bow before him. <laughs> Take him to Pilate! Away with this king of the Jews! say you bear witness to the truth. I ask you this, what is truth? I have told you once and I will say it again. I find no fault in this man. I have had him flogged to the point of death. Your king wears a crown of thorns. Is this not enough? You have a custom that I set one prisoner free for you at the Passover. Who do you want me to release? Barabbas, the robber, or Jesus, the Christ? And what would you have me do with Jesus? Crucify, 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 Take him away and crucify him.
angels and the saints of old, and every heart and every soul who ever breathed the name of Christ. In the final moments, I was standing near the cross. Jesus was struggling to breathe, and I knew the end was near. Suddenly, he cried out in a loud voice, It is finished! The sky turned black as night. The earth shook like it was being split apart. People were screaming, running, falling. Then suddenly, others started shouting, The veil! The veil has been torn! I ran to the temple. I had to see it for myself. The veil that had hidden the Holy of Holies. The veil that had separated God's presence from His people for nearly 1,500 years. 
torn from top to bottom by the hand of God. No more lambs to sacrifice. Jesus was the Lamb of God who paid for my sins once and for all. I missed him already. I knew it was over. He was dead. My Lord was gone. morning, three days after Jesus had died. At first light, a few other women and myself went to his tomb with spices we had prepared for his body. But when we got there, we found that the stone had been rolled away. We went inside, but the place where Jesus' body had lain were only linen cloths. His body was gone. Mary said at first that it was more than she could handle. She said she was standing outside the tomb crying. She turned to look back inside and she saw two people in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been laid. Angels, she said, one at the head, one at the feet. I know what I saw. Two angels were there in the tomb. They spoke to me and said, woman, why are you weeping? I tried to explain. They've taken my Lord and I don't know where they've laid him. As soon as I said this, I turned around and saw a man standing there. I thought it had to have been the gardener. I said, sir, if you've taken him away, please tell me where you've laid him. When I looked up, his eyes met mine, and he called me by name, Mary. I knew in that instant it was him, it was Jesus. He was alive. Mary said that Jesus told her and the other women to find us and tell us that he was alive. We couldn't believe it. Their story seemed like an idle tale to all of us, especially Thomas. He's the one who had said, Until I put my finger in the nail prints in his hands and place my hand where they stabbed him in his side, I would not believe. Now, a week or so later, we were all gathered in the upper room. The doors were closed and locked tight. There had been reports from other disciples that Jesus had also appeared to them. Cleopas was one of them. He said that Jesus appeared to them on the road to Emmaus. But we still couldn't believe that he was really alive. It didn't matter what anyone else had said anyway. I saw him die, and I knew he was dead. Suddenly, Jesus appeared to us right there in the flesh. He said, peace be with you. And then he spoke to Thomas. He said, put your finger in the nail prints in my hands, and place your hand where they stabbed me in my side. Do not doubt any longer, but believe. Jesus said to Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. The blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That applies to all of you. The Lord invites each of us to believe. May we all have the faith and courage to respond as Thomas did. My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Listening on into our God. Listening on into our Oh!
Somebody shout praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together and give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords some praise in this place? Oh God, we love you. We praise you. We magnify your name. We magnify you, oh God. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. If God's touched your heart today, can you shout praise the Lord? How about a big hand for all of these folks that's done a great job today? Amen, amen, amen. You know, there's just lots of different things that, that stand out about this production to me. I've, I've seen it. I don't, well, every time they've done it, I've seen it. And it's like every time. I told somebody just a while ago, we were, leaned over to them, and I said, this right here gets me every time. When I think about the fact that there was a time when people like me and you couldn't come into the presence of God. We had to have a priest in the Old Testament that would go in to God and represent us. And they would offer sacrifices and they'd have to go through all the process of atonement, go to the laver and wash themselves. And, and all, all, this whole process of things had to take place for them to go in to the presence of the Lord into the Holy of Holies to present the blood to provide to in order for us to receive forgiveness. You know, I'm thankful today I didn't have to bring no cattle trailer to church. Y'all all right? I'm glad today I didn't have to bring no lamb and slaughter them before I came in here. And the reason that I don't have to do that was because Jesus became the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. And what happened was in the Old Testament, when the priest would go in, he would wear this vest. It was a highly decorated vest, but the reason was because it had bells all over it. They would take a rope and tie it around his ankle. He would go into the Holy of Holies. And if he had not gone through the process right, if he had sin in his life, when he came into God's presence, it would strike him dead. When the priest went in and you heard bells ring, that was not a good thing. They would take the rope and they would pull him out. But now, because of Jesus, I don't have to go to the priest to confess my sin and get them to go, please beg God to forgive me. Because now the scripture says that I can come boldly to the throne of grace and there I can find mercy and grace to help me in a time of need. That is the Easter story. And when Jesus stood there that day and said, it is finished, and he hung his head and died, people started yelling down the street just like Thomas said, the veil, the veil, it's torn in two. That some of them didn't understand it, but the reason that it had torn in two is because God ripped it, slap in two, and basically said, you don't have to offer no lamb anymore because this was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He was slain once and for all. And now you can come right on into the presence of God and encounter God for yourself. Somebody say amen. amen. I love the song that said that, that uh, he loved me with a cross. Ronnie Henson wrote a song years ago that said when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I'm telling you today, you are on Jesus' mind. He did it for you. And then to watch these angels and demons up here battle it out. Oh, it just reminds me that when Jesus died and said it is finished, though the plan was finished, there was one more thing he had to do. He wasn't just sleeping in a rock inside of a tomb for three days. The Bible says that he descended into the lower parts of the earth. 
Oh, I don't know if, so, I, if I said this, some of y'all are going to be shocked. But what I want to tell you is that Jesus went to hell for you. Because if he didn't go, you're going to have to. He went. Yeah. How do you know? Because he came out of there with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he let captivity captive. He slung the enemy down and said, you are defeated. And now because I'm a child of God and I've accepted Jesus into my life and his blood has been applied to my life, I can say in the name of Jesus, you shut up and get out of my life. He don't have to rule my life anymore. Oh, Lord, if I had 45 more minutes, I believe I could preach. What I want to tell you is, that if the enemy's been beating you up with guilt, condemnation, telling you you're not worthy, God would never save you. Look at all that you've done. What I've come today to tell you is I got some good news for you. The Bible says that whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I mean, you know what? Let me tell you what that means. What that means is, is that it doesn't matter where you were last night. It didn't matter what you've been doing. Jesus said it don't matter. If you'll call on me, I'll save you. The blood of Jesus is more than enough to take care of your situation. You don't have to live under guilt and condemnation anymore. It's time to come out from that and experience peace that passes all understanding. You don't have to keep living a life that's defeated. You know, I used to say, you know, I just can't win for losing. Anybody ever thought that? Well, I just can't win for losing. But when I got saved and he changed my life, now I can't lose for winning. He changed it. He turned it around. He brought joy into my life. What I'm telling you is, is that he can do it for you today. And he wants to do it right now. He wants to do it. So here's what I want you to do. The Bible says that if you'll believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, and that if you would confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, that you would be saved. And again, it works for whosoever will call. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. So, maybe there's somebody here today, I believe there is, that needs to accept Jesus as the Lord of your life. Some of you came because you just came to because you wanted to worship and you wanted to see the production and be a part of it. Some of you came because you were never going to live it down if you didn't. Y'all all right? I mean, you know, I just, you know, I really don't want to go to that. I know they're going to try to be getting me saved, and I just don't want to have to be dealing with all that. Well, I'm just telling you, God got you here because he wanted to offer one more chance, one more chance for you to accept Christ in your life and let him change your life. And today is the day. And there's a second thing that needs to happen. The Lord began dealing with me about a week or so ago. And he said, at this, at this production, I am going to bring backsliders home. I'm going to bring some backsliders home. There's some of you that have served the Lord in your life. Something happened. You got derailed. I don't know. You ran off the track. You got re you got focused on something else. And before you knew it, it's like, you know, your relationship with God was cold. And it just, you know, you just dealing with doubt and fear. And, you know, and there many times you probably said, you know, I, well, I know I need to get back in church. I need to get my life straightened out. And I'm just telling you it's time to come home today. It's time for the prodigals to come home. It won't ever be any easier than it will be right now. So why don't you bow your head with me and let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this day, for this opportunity, Lord, to just share the gospel with this congregation. Lord, I know there are people here today that need to be saved. People watching online today that are backsliders that need to come home. They need to return to the Father's house. Come to the foot of the cross where love is, abounds for you. Lord, in this place today, I want you to touch people. Holy Spirit, have your way and do your work right now. 
I want to, uh, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I know sometimes that seems like stuff that preachers say, but I'm just telling you, I want you to bow your head, and I want you to close your eyes, and I don't want you to peek, because this isn't about anybody but you and God. I know that conviction is in this house today, and I know there are people here that need to be saved, and God is reaching for you right now. And if you would say, look, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to have you come to the front. I'm not going to have you stand up and be recognized. I'm not doing any of that. I just want to know, if you're at a place in your life today, and you would say, you know, I need to get saved. I need to give my life to God. Preacher, just pray for me today. If you'd say, that is me, I want you to raise your hand right now. There's not anybody looking around. Yes, I see your hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody? Yes, I see your hand. Two or three hands back in the back. Thank you, Lord. I see your hands right here up front. Yes, honey, I see yours. See your hand, young man. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, all the way in the back. I see your hands there. Yes, sir, I see your hands, son. I see yours. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Can you put your hand down? Okay, I want to ask one more question. How many of you say, Pastor, I'm one of those backsliders that's been running from God. I know I need to get it right. I need to, 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 to make things right. And I'm, I'm the prodigal you were talking about, and I'm ready to come back home. If you say, that's me, just raise your hand right now. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you see every one of these hands today. You may put them down right now. I want to lead, it. I want to lead you in a prayer. If you raised your hand, I want you to pray with me, but I'm going to ask the choir and I'm going to ask the congregation to pray with me too, just so that it would be an encouragement to you to do it. I want to ask you a question. If you'd say, I believe Jesus died for me, just say, I believe it. If you'd say, hey, I believe Jesus rose again just for me, then just say, I believe it. Now I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just close your eyes and pray this prayer right now. Pray it out loud. Say, oh God, thank you so much for loving me just like I am. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on me, but for still loving me. I need you in my life today. I believe you died for me, Jesus. And I believe you rose again just for me. And I'm asking you right now to come into my heart. Come on in, Jesus. Save me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Change my life. And use me for your glory. All of the days of my life, I want to serve you with all of my life. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, thank you so much. I just pray for these that have prayed that prayer. Lord, numerous hands were up. Lord, you know where they are. You've heard their prayer today. And I thank you, Lord, that you have responded to it. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for drawing people to you. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for causing your spirit to bear witness with their spirit that they are a child of God. Thank you, Lord, that they don't need me to tell them that they are because they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you reveal it to them and they know I am saved, I'm forgiven. Guilt and condemnation have got to go. They're not going to rule my life anymore. Fear is not going to dominate me. I am a child of God, and I'm going to live for him. Thank you so much, Father, for touching your people today. And, Lord, I pray for every believer in this house, and those watching online. Some of them are going through a tough place today. Some of them are struggling, Lord, with hurt, with pain. Lord, our whole town and community the last couple of weeks has just been hit hard with some tough situations, Lord. The loss of loved ones and children and 
those that are important to people, Lord, or to us, we pray for them. We pray for our town and for our county. Bring healing, Lord. Jesus, live big through our lives and let our lives touch this community for the glory of God. Now, Lord, thank you for those that you have saved and brought home today. We thank you for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Can we praise the Lord for what he's done right here today? Amen, amen, and amen. Now, before, you, before we go, I want you to do something for me. You, in, in your bulletin, you should have got a card that looks like this inside of your bulletin. I want you to take that card out, and I want you to fill this card out. I really want to know, first of all, I want to know, I want to know who you are. I want to know that you are here. So if you'll take a minute and fill it out, and you say, well, I don't, I don't have a, a pen or anything like that to write with. Well, down in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, there's a QR code. And probably most of you that don't carry a pen carry a phone. Y'all yes, <laughs> all right? So if you'll pull that QR code up on your phone, you can fill it out right there on your phone, and you can send it to us. We really wish you would do that just because we just, we just want, want to know if there's anything we can do to help you, okay? Now, on the back side of this card, this is what I want to call your attention to. There's, three, there's a box, and it's got three questions in it or three statements right up here in this corner. It says, today I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Today, if you got saved, would you just check that box? We just want to know. Secondly, it says, today I rededicated my life to Jesus Christ. If that's what you did, you were one of those prodigals that came home and rededicated your life to the Lord, then could you just check that box? And thirdly, and lastly, there's a box that says, I am interested in being baptized. Please contact me. You know, we're not asking you to fill out this card so we can bombard you like a telemarketer. That's not, we're not at all interested in that. But if you don't have a home church, then you need one. You need to get connected to a church. A Christian without a church family is like a soldier with no army. I played tuba in the band. A Christian with no family is like a tuba player with no band. Y'all all right? It ain't much. You need a family. You know, I, I'm left-handed. If I was to cut my arm off and throw it down here on the ground, there was an arm. But the arm's not much good unless it's connected to a body. And what I'm trying to tell you is, is, that, is that as a child of God, you, you are fighting battles you don't even need to fight if you're not connected to a church family. You need a church family. And so we want to be, if you don't have one, I mean, there are great churches in Cairo. If you're a member somewhere else and you're involved in it, by all means, get there and get, get involved. But if you don't have a church home, then we want to be that for you. And the first thing you need to do as a new believer is to get baptized. Somebody said, you know, I got saved. I want to do something great for God. Okay, well, how about getting baptized? Oh, I don't want to have to do all that. Getting baptized is the first thing Jesus asks you to do after you get saved. And if we don't obey him in, in taking the first step, why do we think he's going to give us something big and great to do? So you need to be baptized, and we want to help you get that done. That's the only reason we're going to call you and contact you. So if you would take a minute and fill that out, we'd appreciate it very, very much. You can do that. And um, in just a moment, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings for our church like we do every Sunday morning. So, home folks, thank you so much for your faithfulness and your giving. Um, I want to do a couple things right quick. Uh, and somebody says, man, you just keep going on and on. Hey, if you're from Family Worship Center, you already know we early. <laughs> Amen. Um, Ushers, why don't you come, and uh, let's receive the morning tithe and offering. If you have your card filled out, you can just drop it in. If you don't, you can just hand it to an usher on your way out, or you can hand it to any of the cast. Uh, just, just make sure you turn that card in or you fill it out online. We'd appreciate that very much. I'm going to ask you to stand with me today. I want to thank you, home folks, for your giving. Thank you for your faithfulness to bring the tithe and offering every week. 
Thank you to our online family for your faithfulness and giving as well. And that we're just going to pray that God would bless you today as you give. Father, we just give you thanks, give you praise for all that you have done for us. God, you are our provider. And Lord, you always come through for us. And so, Lord, today as we bring the tithe and the offering and we present it to you, we pray, Lord, that you would receive it and that you would bless it and that you would bless your people, that you would supply their every need, reward them, and honor your word for their faithfulness to bring the tithe and the offering. Receive it, Lord, and let the windows of heaven be opened and pour out a blessing upon your people that they don't have room enough to receive it. Bless them and when they go out and when they come in. Bless them, Lord, in the city and in the field. Bless them, O oh God, uh, as the head and not the tail, to be above and not beneath. Supply every need they have. Let your favor go before them. Bless the things that they set their hand to do. And God, we will give you thanks and give you praise for all of these things in Jesus' holy name. And everybody shouted amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated for just one moment. I'm going to ask all the cast, the crew, and everyone, if y'all would, to come on out here on the, on the platform and join us um, for a curtain call, if you will. Y'all come on out, and uh, we want to recognize you guys. Hey, did you enjoy all these dancers today? I'm telling you, they just put the, the cherry on the top. Thank you so much for your hard work and your, uh, your, all the things you did. Uh, a special thanks to Hannah Harrison for the choreography, for all the dancing. She did a great job with all of that. All of our uh, cast and our actors and our narrators, phenomenal job. Just, just blessed all of us. To these Roman soldiers, you guys are bad to the bone. <laughs> Amen. We're so thankful for all of them. And to you, choir. I know I've said something similar to this every night this week, but I'm just telling you, y'all, y'all laid it down. Y'all did it. Y'all blessed us. You sung this music like professionals, anointed people. And I just want to tell you thank you because you truly, uh, it's like Josh said earlier, without the words, it's not anything about it. It's to me, it, it, if you wanted to be Christian, it's about the words. And the words and the message that you sang truly preach the gospel today. And I want to tell you, thank you. One more time, can you give all of these a big hand? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much. Um, one other group that I want to recognize, they are the unsung heroes. You don't really see them much, but you would know it for sure if they were not there. And that's all those people that work in the sound booth that run the lights and the sound and the media. Uh, the folks up there, we call it the box. There's a room right up there, and they do all the editing of the videos for the live stream. And uh, thank you. Thank you. You make us look good. And I would like to, um, to call Josh, our director, uh, to come and together, get, uh, together with us here on the, on the stage. Um, you know, uh, I, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> My friend John Maxwell says that everything rises and falls on leadership. And I do believe that with all of my heart. And uh, Josh, you're a great leader. You're a great visionary leader. I know you're my son, but I can't help but just tell you, you amaze me. You totally amaze me at the gifts that God has given to you. And I thank you for using them here. You could be using them anywhere around the world. You've had the opportunities to do it. But thank you for coming home and using them right here. We love you. Thank you for the vision that you had and helping us accomplish it today. Amen. Now, Laura has uh, something that she would like to present tonight. Thank you. 
So on behalf of the worship arts team, we wanted to honor a few people. Um, we are first going to honor Miss Hannah Harrison, if she'll come on down. You know, there are three people who were the visionaries of this wonderful production. And Hannah's choreography just meshed in with Josh's vision. And we just wanted to let you know that we appreciate you. And we are so thankful for you and what you did. The next person we want to honor is Miss Diane Moore. Now, all the costumes and the props, that was her vision intertwined with Josh's vision. So, the, it's amazing how God gifts our people with just some amazing gifts to be able to put on the most wonderful production to honor our Father. So, Miss Diane, we are thankful for you. We love you. Y'all give her a hand. And at the top would be our director, Joshua Moore. <laughs> he literally has seen the vision of this production playing out for probably, what, the past year? Probably even since COVID. And he just, you know, put it all into place. And it is just amazing to see the gifts that God has given him just roll out into action. So y'all could just give him a good, big old hand of applause. <laughs> we love y'all. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, I want to ask you to stand with us today, and we're going to pray the benediction. And um, again, thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for your support, your prayer, and uh, just for being here today. And Thank God for the people whose lives have been changed over the course of the last three days. Uh, it's amazing what can happen in three days when God's in it. Amen? Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for all of these folks gathered here today. What a blessing they are. God, we thank you for them coming, being a part of this production. And Lord, we just pray that you would watch over them, bless them, care for them as they leave. Lord, thank you for helping those that made decisions and commitments today to get connected to a local church where they can grow and be everything that you have called them to be. God, I just thank you for it. Now, Lord, we rejoice today, tomorrow, and the days ahead that you are not stuck off in some tomb somewhere, but that you are alive and you are well. You are seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us but we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in us, that goes with us everywhere that we go, leads us, guides us. Thank you for the angels that encamp round about us, watch over us, and care for us. And Lord, thank you for fulfilling your word and blessing your people. That is my prayer, and we thank you for it in Jesus' holy name, and amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. And don't forget, it's Easter. Be Christian even in the parking lot, all right? I need all the crew that's been a part of this production to come up here. We have to take a picture uh, with all of you. So please come right now. 